A massive predator, larger than a city bus, bears a lattice of scars on its face. Marks left by monsters almost as huge as itself, wrestling in a lightless world one mile beneath the waves. This is not a whale that eats fish. It is an animal forged by evolution into a living battering ram, designed to hunt giants in an ocean where prey gather in hidden oases, and each meal can mean survival or starvation. But why did nature drive the sperm whale to such monstrous proportions? And what does its size really reveal about the dark world below? The proof is not a story. It is written in wounds and bones, waiting to be unraveled. Its head is a living archive of violence. White circular scars crisscross the skin above the jaw, some as wide as a coffee mug, arranged in rings and rows. Each mark matches the size and geometry of a giant squid's suckers. These are not random scratches from rocks or rivals. They are deliberate imprints, left by arms thick as a man's torso, lined with teeth and hooks, wrapped around the whale's face in a contest neither side can easily win. Consider the scale. Hal Whitehead, a biologist who has spent decades among these animals, has mapped these scars. The patterns repeat from whale to whale, concentrated around the head, identical in diameter and spacing. A clear record of struggles far below the reach of sunlight. Older males bear the heaviest scarring, each new ring a record of another encounter with a formidable enemy. To see a mature bull is to see a map of battles survived, each scar a signature from a squid large enough to fight back. Think about that. Inside the whale, the evidence is even more direct. When whalers once opened the stomachs of these giants, they found piles of chitin beaks, hard curved mouthparts that resist digestion long after the flesh is gone. Some stomachs held hundreds or even thousands of beaks, sorted by size and species. Among them were unmistakable relics, the deep black beaks of Architeuthis, the giant squid, and the massive hooked jaws of Mesonicotuthis, the colossal squid. Each beak is proof of a hunt that ended in the whale's favor, and also a reminder of the risk. This is not an exaggeration. These are not passive prey. A giant squid can stretch 10 meters or more, its tentacles lined with rotating hooks and powerful suckers capable of tearing flesh from bone. Imagine the struggle. The whale carries two records at all times, the scars of its enemies on its face and the remains of its prey in its belly. No other predator on earth wears its battles so openly or swallows such formidable trophies. The evidence is undeniable. A predator must be vast, armored, and relentless because its quarry is neither small nor helpless. Here, evolution rewards size not for show, but for survival in a world where every meal is a fight against another giant. Far below the surface, the deep ocean is a patchwork of emptiness and sudden life. In the mesopelagic zone, between 200 and 1,000 meters down, prey do not drift evenly. Giant squid and similar creatures gather in dense, shifting groups, shaped by underwater ridges, cold upwellings, and invisible chemical trails. These clusters, oases in the dark, are unpredictable, appearing and disappearing with the currents, sometimes absent for months before returning in force. This is not random. It is a map of scarcity turned into opportunity. For predators, this world is harsh. Most of the ocean is a black desert with only scattered pockets of abundance. Only those able to cross vast distances hold their breath for an hour 
and search with patience can hope to find food. Mathematics, as much as muscle, rules survival here. Optimal foraging theory predicts that when prey are rare and scattered, size becomes a powerful advantage. Larger animals can store more energy, travel farther, and wait longer between meals. In this environment, a small hunter would starve before finding enough to eat. Only the giants can afford the long search and still survive. Imagine crossing a thousand empty kilometers for a single meal. Oceanographic surveys have revealed these squid-rich layers, deep scattering zones that move up and down each day, sometimes gathering above seamounts or along cold current boundaries. Acoustic sensors show clouds of moving targets, each a possible meal, but separated by kilometers of empty water. Sperm whales, with their vast oxygen and fat reserves, are built for these odds. Their bodies are not just large, they are designed to bridge the gaps between prey patches that may be separated by days or weeks of searching. Listen to the data, moments of plenty, stretched across oceans of nothing. Every successful hunt in this world is an act of endurance. The whale's size is not excess, but insurance. A living reserve of energy for long, uncertain journeys through darkness. A single giant squid can sustain a whale for days. The reward for finding one is immense. The penalty for failure is just as great. Here, survival depends on the ability to wait, to travel, and to endure the long silence between encounters. For sperm whales, impossible size is not a luxury. It is a necessity dictated by the mathematics of survival. At 1,000 meters below the waves, the rules of survival change. Here, pressure climbs past 100 atmospheres, enough to collapse steel, enough to erase the shape of anything not built for the abyss. Sperm whales do not just visit this world, they make it routine. Telemetry tags attached by research teams led by Peter Tyak and colleagues record dive after dive, plunging well beyond one kilometer. Many descents reach depths between 1,200 meters and 2,000 meters, with the deepest tagged individuals vanishing to 2,250 meters, twice the height of the tallest mountain on land inverted into darkness. Imagine that scale in a place with no horizon. Each journey is a race against time and physics. A single dive can last 45 minutes, sometimes more than an hour. The clock starts the moment the whale leaves the surface, lungs filled with air that will soon be compressed to a fraction of its original volume. For every 10 meters descended, another atmosphere of pressure is added. At depth, temperature hovers just above freezing, two to four degrees Celsius, and the darkness is absolute. No sunlight ever reaches these hunting grounds. Only the faint glow of bioluminescent prey and the echoes of the whale's own clicks illuminate the hunt. The numbers are unforgiving. At 1,000 meters, pressure is 100 times greater than at the surface. At 2,000 meters, it doubles again. The whale's body must resist crushing forces, prevent heat from leaking away, and ration every molecule of oxygen. Each deep dive is a gamble. Suffocation, hypothermia, and collapse are always waiting. Telemetry records show even brief surface intervals, sometimes just minutes, separate these marathon descents. There is no margin for error, only a body built on a massive scale can survive repeated assaults from the deep. For sperm whales, size is not just an advantage. It is the only way to endure the crushing depths, the cold, and the long silent hunt. This is the logic of adaptation, written in bone, blubber, and breath. Survive the pressure, preserve oxygen, hunt what others cannot reach. The deep demands scale, and sperm whales deliver it.
a head the size of a city bus, evolved to hunt animals nearly its own size. The sperm whale's head is an engine of impossible proportions. Inside, the spermaceti organ stretches for meters, a reservoir of oil and connective tissue that can make up a quarter of the whale's body mass. This is not dead weight. It is the core of a hunting machine built for the dark. Imagine sound as both weapon and map. When a sperm whale hunts, it produces clicks that reach 230 decibels among the loudest biological sounds ever measured. Each click is focused and amplified by the spermaceti, channeled through the junk and nasal passages, then fired into the blackness like a sonar cannon. Peter Madsen's acoustic studies revealed that the size of this organ is directly tied to the intensity of these clicks. The bigger the organ, the further the sound travels, the deeper the whale can search for prey hidden beyond the reach of light. A larger organ, louder clicks, deeper search. But the head is only half the story. Deep inside the whale's body, blood and muscle act as vaults for oxygen. Sperm whales carry more blood per kilogram than almost any other mammal, and their muscles are packed with myoglobin, a protein that stores oxygen for long anaerobic dives. Every kilogram of muscle is a battery charged for the next descent. These reserves allow a whale to stay submerged for more than an hour, searching and chasing in the cold, crushing dark. Thermal inertia becomes a shield. The whale's sheer mass slows the loss of heat, letting it operate where smaller bodies would freeze. In the deep size is the difference between endurance and collapse. Now picture bulk turned into power. The spermaceti organ acts as both a lens and an amplifier, driving clicks that can stun or disorient prey and map the seafloor kilometers away. The oxygen-rich blood and muscle extend every hunt, every search, every fight with a giant squid. In that world, size is not merely an advantage. It is the currency of survival, traded for time, range, and the ability to turn sound into a weapon. Why do sperm whales grow to such impossible sizes? Because the pressures of deep ocean hunting and predation by giant squid favored bodies that could carry bigger sonar, larger oxygen stores, and enough mass to resist cold and pressure. Size optimizes range, endurance, and the capacity to make sound into force. That is the clear answer. And yet the ocean keeps secrets. What lives deeper than sperm whales can reach remains an open mystery. Even today, sperm whales dive deeper than any other predator, yet 80% of the ocean remains unexplored. Their size is evolution's answer to a world we still barely understand. What thrives beyond their reach may rewrite the limits of life itself. The true giants of the deep remain undiscovered.